Well, uh, Robert Jenrick, he's sort of becoming the favourite, I think, in the race to be the next Conservative leader from uh, my sort of uh, distance position of watching these things as a casual spectator. Um, now, he's turned around and said that he would like to include Boris Johnson in his cabinet if he became Conservative Party leader and returned the party to power. But I'm wondering if Boris Johnson would actually want to come back and get an MP salary when he's clearly earning a lot of money doing speaking tours and having a nice old time. And also, is Boris Johnson this sort of magical silver bullet that he once was? Well, let's get the uh, thoughts on that from Ryan Saby, who's deputy political editor at The Sun. Hi, Ryan. Good evening, Alex. Great to have you on. So, Boris, I mean, it's funny. Everyone always goes, for, what about Boris? Boris is going to save the day. Boris is going to sort of be brought back and the Conservative Party will get a majority and it'll be woo, it'll be spiffing, brilliant. And, you know, I, I just think that day's passed. Yeah, and I, I think Boris um, is probably, he feels like for the moment he wants to certainly sit this leadership um, election campaign out and the, the next sort of, you know, few years of uh, uh, the Conservative Party history out. Um, and also, I think if he is going to come back, I think there probably needs to be a lot more distance between uh, him and him and Partygate. Um, I think that is still uh, fresh in the memories of uh, of, of many people. Um, so, so I think if Boris is to, to to come back in any sort of guise, um, I think he probably waits two or three years. Um, then he sees: is there a by-election on the horizon? Do I then come back? What's the state of the Conservative Party? Um, in two or three years' time. And I think there's so many questions about the Conservative Party and the next leader. Is the next leader who's going to be elected um, come what, at the end of October um, uh, or November, is that person actually going to be the leader to fight the next election? Or is this leader really just going to be some kind of interim um, interim uh, leader who's, who's going to sort of settle the nerves in the Conservative Party and just sort of set them up as... Uh, as a, as a party who looks like they could get in government again. But uh, it, it, I think Boris, it's time to, for him. I feel like he's going to sit this one out. He's earning a lot of money on the on the lecture circuit. He's got his book coming out in, uh, in, in October. And you just kind of feel this is not the right time for him to come back. How would you um, how would you say the runners and riders are looking at the moment, Ryan? Because I mean, I sort of feel like um, Robert Jenrick is making a, a really good progress, and people are sort of suggesting it could end up as a two horse race between the two wings of the party, Jenrick versus Tugendhat. Um, but is that just sort of you know mischief making by columnists, or is that what's really going on? I feel like uh, Robert Jenrick's making an extremely good stab at this. I think he's got a very good campaign team uh, behind him. He is, I th also think he's made the uh, the best of uh, the summer, actually. Uh, him and uh, also you mentioned there, Tom Sugenhat, they really have been up and down uh, the country. I think Robert Jenrick this week alone is visiting 15 local associations. So I think Robert Jenrick has not only got his eye on the MPs who are going to whittle this down to uh, the, the, the final two come after, the, after that party conference, but... Uh, uh, he's also got uh, his eyes on the on, on the, the membership as well. So, uh, um, I, you know, who are going to have, have their say. So I think uh, I think Robert Jenrick's had a good sort of summer, actually, getting to know the, the members and getting to know the MPs. Also, Tom Sugan has been up and down the country. Um, and also, I think James Cleverly. I think he is, uh, just thinking at the top of my head, obviously the most senior person um uh to have held office in that in that race and uh i think he's making a pretty good uh, stab of it as well especially no, pretty when... pretty patel she's on moves yeah no exactly i think uh pretty as well um it'd be interesting to see whether she gets down to that 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 final uh two i think she'll make it to uh the party conference when you have that final four who uh, make their pitches uh uh, to members. So, uh, but I think one thing that James Cleverly and Pretty have got on their side is every time Labour come under pressure uh, when it comes to small boats, and Robert Jenrick for, for, for that matter, they really can uh, make hay because they have that experience of being in the Home Office and trying to sort out um, the, the illegal migration uh, crisis. Not that it's, uh, you know, the numbers are still high, but yeah. they do at least have that experience. Now, uh 
I would forgive them for the fact that Parliament's in recess, so there's not much technically from Westminster they can do right now. But given that the country is in absolute crisis, given that Sir Keir Starmer's ratings are sort of sinking to a very low ebb right now, and a lot of people out there are feeling sort of existentially worried about the country at the moment, I've been wondering where the heck Rishi Sunak is. I mean, about yeah, six weeks ago, he was our Prime Minister. He's still the leader of the Conservative Party, and I haven't heard a peep from him in ages yeah no exactly the last time uh, i saw um sight of uh of rishi sunak it was only a photograph he, i think he was out in uh california I, I guess having been in that job for the best part of two years having run a pretty exhausting uh leadership um general election campaign i think he just decided to take time off and, and have a break but it does beg the question is the real opposition at the moment being led by those those six candidates and uh you uh, parliament will be back um the first week of september and uh there'll be prime minister's questions there'll be the the usual um holding the government to the to account so you just wonder whether uh, rishi sunak just needed a holiday just needed a break to uh uh to you know to get everything out of his system but he'll be you know come back fighting for that month and a half, two months or so before uh, that they just, the Tories decide their next leader. I mean, talking about, um, you know, where is the opposition, uh, there is a Nigel Farage waiting in the wing saying that he wants to make his party the opposition. And there is bits of polling that have been scattered around online are suggesting that actually um, he's making some big gains, particularly in the sort of situation we find ourselves in now, where some of the huge issues that the country is facing haven't been answered by the previous government government aren't being answered right now by the incumbent government and perhaps the issues as well that are only characters like Nigel Farage dare tread. Yeah that's right I think if uh, I think uh, reform have got a great opportunity in the in the next year or so they've got that great base of having uh, a, a handful of MPs um, but I think it'd be interesting to see what they do in the uh, in the local elections how many candidates they actually put up and actually see if they try and make some inroads there um there has been obviously nigel farage been very vocal on the issue of the riots um uh, you know in, in recent weeks you just wonder uh he's out in america i believe at the moment or he's about to go you just wonder whether he actually comes back and uh you know, you know would do voters feel like he may be spending too much time with his uh, you know attention elsewhere so i think that's probably one question reform have got to ask themselves the balance between being a good MP, a good parliamentary leader, and you know, the, those outside interests. Nigel Farage may well think that he's got that balance um, just about right, but it'll be interesting to see what the voters think. Yeah, no, you make a very good point, Ryan. Thank you ever so much. It's always good catching up with you. Um, I mean, it is. I do feel at the moment the Labour Party is sort of blowing themselves up because there isn't really many voices yes. of opposition against them and people are looking at what's going on. And either Sir Keir Starmer's been a genius and got this right because by calling everything far right and saying, you're all despicable, we don't care about the concerns of the white working class, we want everyone to be a nice, tolerant, progressive society, whether he's actually sort of thrown a grenade into the the Conservative Party leadership contest and this tug of war between left and right. Oh, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. By, by the way, Rishi Sunak was last spotted a few days ago in a, in a pizza restaurant in Beverly Hills where a mushroom pizza apparently cost 32 quid. So that's where <sighs> he last was. <laughs> Uh, you can't just vacate the scene. You can't call a snap election and then like saunter uh, off to Beverly Hills, well, you big bozo. Well, apparently what he's got, he's got a 5.7 million luxury penthouse in Santa Monica. And the suggestion is that he's looking for his next job in Silicon Valley. So well, that doesn't We heard it me. here first. On, with yeah, that, we know he didn't want to let go of that green card. <laughs> we all, were warned. It's all going to be good. No, but in answer to your question, well, a couple of things there. Boris, you, you might remember, is working on that sort of yeah. principle that uh, he used to be the Carlsberg politician who could yeah. reach parts of the electorate that nobody else could reach and that's what got him the 80 seat majority well let's see he did say hasta la vista i'll be back so yes. we'll soon find out and hasta la vista because i'll be back